is hydrogen the future of transportation? Well, there's certainly a lot of hydrogen in the world. It's the most common element in the entire universe. The problem is it is also the most social element in the entire universe. It wants to bond with everything else that gets around it. So in order to separate it out, it takes either very, very small tweezers or it takes a lot of technology. We're here at the National Hydrogen Conference to see people and talk with people who believe they can separate that out, compress it, put it into an engine, and make it the solution for your next car. Bob Boyd with Lindy, tell us about the efficiencies of hydrogen. Is it is it more efficient, less efficient than gasoline? The exciting thing about hydrogen, besides zero emissions and the fact that we're able to use it in electric vehicles, it gives us really good range out of electric vehicles. Besides all that, zero emissions. The really the really cool thing, the reason we're here today, and why we've all been working for 10 years to get this slot, is that if you take a unit of volume of, say, natural gas, and put it into your Honda Civic, for a good example, because that's a car that you could buy today, you might be able to go EPA 35 miles on that gallon of gasoline equivalent to natural gas. We take the same amount of natural gas, we convert it into hydrogen, and use some of that natural gas to make it into hydrogen, and use some of it to compress the hydrogen and put it into a fuel cell car, it'll go about 25% faster. Okay, Ed Haydorn, uh, Commercial Development with Air Products. Tell us about the efficiencies of making hydrogen. Sure, hydrogen today is made in large scale, uh, very efficient, over 80 to 85 percent uh, in terms of energy in to energy out. Uh, so it's a, uh, technologies already exist that can produce hydrogen uh, at efficiencies and costs that can meet the, uh, the needs for transportation and other applications. Why not just uh, take the electricity or the energy that it takes to produce hydrogen and put it into electricity and electric battery. Tell us about the efficiencies that hydrogen offers. Sure. Uh, it, it, it's actually complementary in terms of the market focus of your transportation. Uh, hydrogen has its advantages in terms of providing additional range and capability in vehicles that perhaps batteries aren't able to, to meet in, in the early deployment. In terms of efficiencies, again, it becomes a choice of what's the right use of the different feedstocks that are available, whether renewable or conventional feedstocks. And hydrogen can provide a pathway that complements uh, what's already happening in the world of electricity production to serve the transportation market because its needs are there and are going to continue to grow. So hydrogen doesn't necessarily have to supplant electricity. It can go hand in hand with uh, electricity in uh, battery-powered electric vehicles, for instance. Exactly. It, it, it's, it's a way to look at uh, look at the, the entire production system from uh, just the best use of all the available fuels, especially limited renewable resources that are available today. Are there any drawbacks at all to hydrogen? Yeah, there is. The biggest drawback is density. It's a light gas. How do you get it into a small space? When we look at other fuels, like say diesel fuel, diesel fuel has probably the does. It has the highest energy per liter or per gallon. So if you're trying to package it as a vehicle designer, you want to package as much room for golf clubs and people and storage and the kids as you can, and as little space for fuel. Um, so with hydrogen, that's the biggest problem, is finding a place to put it on the car. Even if we make it into a liquid, it's still four, five, six times less dense than gasoline. So that's really the biggest challenge. And making it into a liquid cost takes still more energy to create it, to make it into a liquid form. It does. It does. It does. There are some trade-offs. Liquid is good for certain applications. Compressed is good for other applications. And right now, we're standardizing on compressed storage at what we call 700 bar, which is high pressure for carbon fiber tanks. And, um, and, and that's really the, where we're approaching this as an industry right now. So, hydrogen, like this car going by me right now, could be the fuel of the future, or it could just be so much marketing gobbledygook. As one cynic so aptly said, hydrogen is the fuel of the future, always has been, always will be. For Auto Week, it's Mark Vaughn.